Spring football is on and popping across the country. Georgia gets kicked off today. A lot of other programs, like I already mentioned, have been rolling for some time now. You got Ohio State practicing in jerseys and helmets and basketball shorts, Florida, Texas, a lot of schools across the country, right? So with that being said, what are some schools that demand our attention? What are some schools that are, you know, needed to be focused on throughout spring practice? I think we look no further than the University of Texas at Austin for the first place that we focus. Because think about where they're at right now as a program. Steve Sarkeesian now going into year three, and there is a point in time in any relationship where you kind of figure out what you are, right? Like, it's great to get to know each other. It's great to date. It's great to sort of figure out who the other person is. But at a certain point in time, like, hey, does this thing have legs? Do we know what we're going to be? And that's exactly what Texas is this coming year. Now, notice, I did not say that Texas and Steve Sarkeesian are going to break up if they don't win the Big 12 title. I did not say that. Some of you may feel differently. That's okay. You're entitled to your opinion. I believe they at least need to make the Big 12 title game at least show up in that game. And why? Because all the excuses that were built in previously for Texas, the, ah, oh man, where the culture was bad before, you had to get the bad apples out, had to turn over the whole program, had to shift everything. That's all happened now. You're going into year three. You've got 10 starters back on offense, including the guy at quarterback in Quinn Ewers. Time for talking's over. Time for excuses is over. So what do we focus on this spring for this team? Well, first, I don't think it goes without saying, Quinn Ewers, right? I mean, that is going to be the bell cow of their offense this coming season. Bijan Robinson is gone. You expect them to be potentially a little bit more pass friendly, so to speak. You got some weapons, Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, Isaiah Nayor. You're going to have to ask Quinn Ewers to throw the football for you consistently because he flashed at times last year. But what's the progress like for him in spring camp? Steve Sarkeesian said it feels like the engine is starting to rev a little bit for Quinn Ewers. They're starting to really get it. Because last year, first year in the saddle, really should have been a true freshman. He came in as, I guess you would call him a, a redshirt freshman. But you hear what I'm saying. This is the year where Quinn Ewers makes good on all that we thought about him when he declared early for college and went to Ohio State. Second thing we're looking at during spring practice for the Texas Longhorns, what I was just talking about a second ago, man, it's culture. It's culture, and I said it before with one of our spring previews for Texas. I want to see this team be chippy. I want to see that competitive edge. I want to see them be player-led because that's what great teams do. And Texas has said as much. Different players have actually spoken to the media about this and said great teams are coach-fed, player-led. Okay, that's the way that it has to be at Texas going forward. So what is the culture like? Are they able to finish in the second half of games is where we're going to really be able to tangibly see what that culture looks like. That's the next step. Because listen, you can hide culture in the first quarter. You can hide culture when you're playing group of five, north, south, east, west, doesn't matter. You can't hide culture in the second half of a tight football game. Heck, you can't hide culture when you're down by one score in the second half of a football game. Or in Texas's case, when they're up. Are they able to finish the deal? Are they able to have that culture that gets them through the finish line in the fourth quarter? That starts in spring. I know you have to execute in the fall, but all of that foundation is laid in spring. So what is the intel we're getting throughout spring practice? And what are we hearing about Texas? Make sure you're locked in over at Inside Texas because they do a phenomenal job covering this. The Texas on three site. Telling you up to the minute, they got you covered. So make sure you got a membership there. Also, make sure you're subscribed here to the On3 YouTube channel. We got content for you, like I said, every single day. Everything that you and I both know and love about this beautiful sport, it happens here. Okay, so make sure you're subscribed. Follow me on the social channels as well, at JD Pakel on Instagram, as well as on Twitter. Let's also focus on Ohio State now for different reasons than why we're focusing on Texas. But Ohio State, think about what you have traditionally come to expect from them, what we have known about Ohio State. Win the Big Ten, beat Michigan, win Natties. All right, this ain't a new drill for us. We've talked about this a lot on this program. But for Ohio State, they have missed those expectations two years in a row now. People in Columbus will tell you, the standard is set here. It ain't changing anytime soon. And so you have the standard set here with the increased pressure of having missed those expectations. So you kind of feel like maybe there's a little bit more eyeballs on Ohio State. And then in addition to that, 
the strength of your football team, your leader, C.J. Stroud, he's gone to the league, could be the number one pick. So you're going to have a change at the most important position on your football team at quarterback with extra pressure around it. And also there's a lot built out around that quarterback. Okay, Marvin Harrison Jr., Emeka Egbuka, Travion Henderson, Mayan Williams. Like the, the offense will be ready to rule. Do they have the quarterback? to be able to make good on that Ferrari of an offense. And also in the secondary, they went into the portal and got themselves some ballers. How do they translate in the second year of Jim Knowles' defense? Because when you look at Ohio State, the offense wasn't the problem last year. I don't think the offense will be the problem this year. I know you switch quarterbacks like I was just talking about a second ago. That's important. You have to be able to still produce how you expect to produce, and I think they will. But the defense, I think is where you really hone in on this spring if you're an Ohio State Buckeye fan. And get a membership at Letterman Row, the Ohio State on three side, if you haven't already. But if you can be, let's just call it 5% better in the secondary, whatever that looks like. To me, that's a handful of plays in crunch time. 70-plus yard touchdown against Georgia, a couple of deep passes against Michigan. If you are 5% better and eliminate, let's just say that one deep pass against Georgia, you can make the argument that Ohio State season finishes differently. Maybe it doesn't come down to a field goal against Georgia. Maybe you're able to force Michigan to play a different style of football. And Ohio State, I don't want to really focus on the Michigan game because they kind of fell apart in that one. But you hear what I'm saying. If the secondary can be ever so slightly better and you get a quarterback in either Kyle McCord and Devin Brown to make this Ferrari go, Ohio State's going to be in really good shape. But they've swung and missed the last two seasons. And so people are upset with Ryan Day. Even though he's 45 and 6 as a head coach, people are saying, hey, the bar is set here. And we haven't reached that. So for that reason, I think Ohio State is fascinating to look at when it comes to what's going to happen in this coming season. The pressure in Columbus is immense, to say the least. Notre Dame, to me, is like... When you're in the gym playing pickup with your buddies, whether it's 24-7 and you're at the local high school, whatever it is, and you're on one end of the gym, and a big six-foot-eight dude walks in, and he's over there on the other side of the gym getting shots up, warming up, whatever it is, everybody's wondering what that big dude is going to do. Can he ball? Is he going to dunk? What's, what's he bringing to the table here? Six-foot-eight. He looks impressive. That's what Notre Dame is to me in 2023. You bring back your entire running back room. You went into the portal and tried to shore up that defensive line. Got a lot of pieces back on defense in itself. The offensive line is nasty. Got NFL draft picks on that thing. And then you add Sam Hartman, otherwise known as uh, the ACC's all-time touchdown pass leader. So, yeah, you got a proven commodity there, the most important position on your team. Do you have a playmaker on the outside to make your offense explosive? Because if you do, Notre Dame's going to be a problem for a lot of teams this season. I'm telling you. I mean, look at what they did last year with a backup quarterback. I think Sam Hartman and Notre Dame are a team to watch emphatically so. Emphatically, I feel that way. Because Marcus Freeman heading into his second year, we're still kind of wondering what he's going to be as a head coach. I don't think you can get an accurate assessment of who he is as a head coach based on year one. But now he's recruited via the portal. And I think we're going to see some positive return on investment there from Marcus Freeman and company with their efforts. So for Notre Dame, again, they're that big six foot eight, impressive looking team walking into the gym. Everyone's sort of holding their breath and saying, okay, what are they going to do? Spring football should tell us a lot about this offense. And when I say a lot, it should tell us a lot about the base level of this offense. How are they going to look? Are they going to run a lot of two tight end sets? Is it going to be still ground and pound with play action over the top? Do they open it up more? Things of that nature. We're still going to kind of watch this team get warmed up during the spring, but I very much so believe they will be a force when toe meets leather in the fall. Then finally, how about Clemson? Because Clemson's always been built well, right? I mean, relatively, they recruit in the top 10 every single year. Dabo Sweeney runs his program, how he runs it. And now you have a, a, a machine that was, that was always built well. Like I said, the personnel is always top tier in terms of the ACC. But you switch out the tires, right? You add Cade Klubnick at quarterback. Make the switch there. You bring in Garrett Riley from TCU, from an offense that was averaging close to 40 points a game. 
and Garrett Riley turned Max Duggan into a Heisman Trophy winner. When previous, excuse me, uh, excuse me, Heisman Trophy finalist, Caleb Williams obviously won the Heisman Trophy, but you hear what I'm saying. Max Duggan was a backup quarterback when Garrett Riley got there. I understand he played for TCU, but he wasn't even your QB1 when you got there. What is he going to do with a guy like Cade Klubnick, who's got as much talent as he does under the hood? How far do these new tires on the machine with Garrett Riley and Cade Klubnick, how far does that take you if you're Clemson? Because you look at what they did a season ago, and the two games that you lost as a Clemson team, it felt like you didn't get enough at quarterback. And that's not to knock DJU. Heck, we're big DJU stands on this program. We love DJU. But against South Carolina, threw for less than 100 yards. Against Notre Dame, the whole offense was anemic. But you got to look at the quarterback as well as a part of that. Not saying it was all on DJ, but there was a lot that you point to and say, hmm, if we're more dynamic, does that change the outlook of this game? So for Clemson, you feel like you're close. I'm not saying they're a perfect ball club, but you got to feel like they're close. What's the progress they make during the spring? How far along is Kate Klubnick and Garrett Riley in this offense after 15 practices? I think it'll still take some time to mesh, but how quickly does it mesh? We should get a good gauge for through spring football. So Texas, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Clemson, all teams that I think we need to really pay attention to this spring. Not because we're going to get absolutes from them. We're not going to get answers a thousand percent. But spring is for taking a temperature of things that we want to know more about. I'm telling you, information, information, information. You get enough of that, you'll get a good gauge for what they look like during the fall. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.